you can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man step to the room with legends, Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League, he's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this it's back on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Vibe 5. Myself, Joe Bayer, still in Manchester, <sighs> basking in the glory of a draw with Rio Ferdinand here. But listen, man, we're going to start off with the Arsenal section, but you wanted to let him know something, Rio. Yeah, man, just make sure you stick around because we've got some big thoughts on Man United, man, and what's going on at, that, at our football club. So, um, a long weekend for a Man United fan, so... I'll let Joe have his little moment and then we can get on to Man United, more important things. Why is my moment little? Huh? I told Carl Walker, they laughed at me, Rio. You laughed at me. And I said, no, listen, you're... you did? You said, no, no, Why your you... energy, your energy was like you're going to go there and bang them up. That's what your energy was saying. But the, my direct quotes were, we're going to get something from the game. Actually, I've you're been right. speaking to my that. Arsenal friends. We're going to be... Please well, run what, the clip. What, what's, what's the feeling like? What's the, like? what's the feeling from people... I know the Arsenal fans are, are bugging out there, basking in their glory, to quote you. Um, what's the feeling? You, what's the energy like you're getting from outside? You know what? It surprised me, if I'm honest, Rio, because what? I thought to myself, you know, we've done our job. We've come up to Manchester. We've stopped them scoring in 50-something games. You know, elite duo defending by Gabriel Saliba... You know, the attackers weren't at their best. I've come out the stadium, I'm bouncing. Everyone's saying, outside the Arsenal fan base, ooh, don't know about that one. Ooh, Liverpool are now favourites, you know. You've played it right into Liverpool hands. And I thought to myself, what did you expect us to do? Like, City's, City's home ground in the Premier League is a fortress. I just, I don't know, I just feel like people are like, downplaying us and it actually hurts to be honest with you because I thought this is besides a victory we came up and we did our job yeah I, I have to say listen I, I look at it like if I was there playing now and I'm in a title race I've been in title races I've been there I've seen that what it feels like to go to a rival mm. at this stage of the season as tight as it is Mikel and his team would have been going you know what we'll take that a draw if, we, if before the a ball was kicked, they would say we'll take a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd want to win, obviously. But if you get a draw, you take that, right? And to keep a clean sheet, home and away against Man City, is telling you all Mikel Arteta is doing is moving in the right di direction with his team. And listen, we mess about, yeah, but Arsenal are serious now. I have to say because the last couple of years, his, his project. How long has he been there? Three years. Yeah, and he's. So and he's, he's uh... Yeah, this project is a. Arsenal was showing this is the template of how to do it. Four years. So this, Arsenal was showing the template of how to do this. Like, you give a manager time. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be moments where the, the fans get a little bit unsettled. He's going to have big moments in his, in his managerial especially, uh, career, especially early, where he's got to make massive decisions. You look at the, the Abamian one, who was club captain, the top goal scorer on the most money, signed a new deal, mm. made that decision quick, stuck with it. And does it with his chest out. I think Mikel Arteta is really showing in the, in the, the modern game. This is how it has to be done. He yeah. still has yet to win, win. He's got to win that 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 league trophy or a uh, European trophy to cement himself. But every single thing that he's doing right now is coming off um, bar winning that that big big trophy because. We've seen how difficult it is when you're replacing managers there. Like it, it, it going into a big club like this. It's difficult and it can't happen overnight. You can't say even two years is too early. Three years sometimes, but managers aren't given this time. And I think Edu and Arsenal Football Club need a huge pat on the back for the way that they've conducted themselves in this. And they never, ever, ever kind of panicked or listened to the noise outside too much. They know Before they've got the right man. Huh? Before we break it down a little bit, you went to the Arsenal ground. If those of you who have been watching the podcast throughout the course of the season, Rio, you spoke with Mikel Arteta and you mm. said something about the mentality and what you saw written across the training ground. Yeah, all the, there's messaging everywhere. There's key messaging in terms of winning. Um, 
Mikel Arteta, I'm on a leadership course, yeah? There's an Australian company that does elite leadership courses for big business owners and big business leaders around the world who are, who are, who are leading huge billion-dollar companies. Mikel Arteta is on this course. So what I'm saying is this guy is an obsessive-natured person who is always looking for the extra percentage to improve, to get to the next level. Um, and he's working on ways that are outside of the box of trying to find those little percentages. And whenever I've seen him, I've spent any time with him, I've spoken to him, there's that steeliness in their eyes that is, he ain't wavered by anything. As I said, he ain't listened to the outside noise. He has an absolute understanding of what he wants to achieve and he's going for it. And you can see in his team now, his team seem to me now, they are a reflection of him. Hard, brave, um, spiky at times, um, looking to try and claw their way up to somebody. They're, they're, they're seeing, they're, he's seeing Pep, they're seeing the De Bruyne's and the, the Harlands, etc., and wanting to get beyond them. And they're doing it relentlessly. And they're, they're doing it in a way that is exciting to watch. Um, and I think you Arsenal fans, listen, we mess about and we have a laugh in it. And I love ribbing you and all the Arsenal fans. But I have to say, I really respect what Arsenal are doing. Uh, Arsenal, when I used to walk into the marble halls, the marble corridors at Highbury, and you used to see the guards standing there in their suits, looking all kind of that nostalgia, that, that history, you could smell it walking in there. And you used to think, right, this is a real club. Mm. Arsenal seem to, for me, it seems like they're back getting to that place where you walk in there and you go, immediate respect. Lost it for a while, I must say. Lost it for a while. But Mikel, Mikel Arteta and his boys and his players uh, are getting it back. You know what's mad? I, I went I've done a photo shoot for some... Because you know I'm on this modelling thing, and I do this fashion thing. Oh, is it? I, do, I yeah, didn't know. Yeah. It's I what I do, man. Know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you just modelling yeah. thing that we do. <laughs> I was on a shoot the other day, and Declan was there. Yeah. And I was saying to Declan, man, he, he watches the show, obviously, and I was saying, he was saying about how we have a laugh and that on here. And I was saying, I actually feel you've got a really good... I think you could win it this year. I actually do think you could genuinely win it. I think it's a good three-horse race. I was really Man City dominant before, and I thought they were definitely going to win it. But after after the last few weeks, what I've seen, I just think you guys, the experience of last season, the mentality, you speak to any of the boys, I spoke I've interviewed Martin Odegaard, Saka, Declan, and they all just feel like they're sitting there. I can see it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't talk about winning. There's a confidence but, now, man. There's a before yeah. we used to be like the laughing stock, and you know we rock up and it's our Arsenal. We're just big on socials, but now we're rocking up to us. Look, if you look at the Emirates alone, the performances, the teams that we've beaten there: United, City, Liverpool, Newcastle. Like we we we've, we've beaten some some teams out there, and um, but I'm glad what you said earlier on, Rio. Though you said we were steely. Like, we were strong. Troy Deeney famously accused us of not having any cojones, right? Or lacking cojones, right? And um, shout out to Troy. We're going to be getting him on soon. Uh, but yeah, he... But the difference is, yesterday, I saw us doing the nasty work, Rio. You know, laying down on the ground, delaying play, you know, fouling players, not being afraid, not giving City too much respect. And um, I was mad proud of the boys. That Don't get it twisted. This is the lowest amount of possession that we've had this season. It wasn't pretty. Far from, you know, one of the guys, Jake Mallon said, oh, the game was boring. Maybe for the neutral, but we had a game plan and we stuck to it to a T. Um, and I think it just makes for a very, very interesting end to the season. Do, man. And, do, you, know, do yeah. you know what? It's, it's before, Troy Deeney's talking about when there was always a weak spot in that team somewhere at the back. There was always mm. someone you could pick up. They might have had Koscielny, who was top mm. around that time, yeah? But then there was someone else who they could pick on. You could go and find someone in that team or in that back four who you could unnerve, bully a little bit, get around. If you pressure them, they'd, they'd fold a little bit after five minutes. So that's why Arsenal, we was always confident. If Arsenal were ever kind of near us or anything, we always were confident around them times that after the Wenger times, really, or the back end of Wenger and after Wenger, you was always comfortable and confident that at some, time, some point, these guys will fuck it up. They will. Mm. They'll self-implode. They'll... They'll go to Stoke away or Bolton and get done. Do you know what I mean? They'll drop points somewhere because they can't hack it. Birmingham. So 
that was always the case. This, these guys don't look like that. They dropped points away to they lost to Porto away in the Champions League, and no point did I ever think they'll get beat. I just thought they'll, I, they'll manage they'll manage it and find a way. And yeah. the confidence. I, when I spoke to see Declan the other day, he was waxing lyrical, raving about Gabriel. Yeah, who I criticised last season, and and I, and I'll stand by that, and rightly so last season. But he seems so to have learned. He seems to have learned. He's matured, and he's one of the most aggressive but also controlled now and composed centre arts in the league. And his partnership with Saliba, mate, they're, they're, they are, they are, if Saliba was fit last season, they might have won the league, you know, you might have won Maybe. the league. He's, he's, he's importance and he's, he's, his stature within the team now is alongside Gabriel. I don't think you can look at one without the other. And I, I mean, and, and that, and that's what you want. Saliba won, got man of the match yesterday. Uh, the stats per stats are most possessions won eight, most jewels won eight. Most yeah, clearances five. Yeah. Most position one in the middle. Um, he was the third. Um, zero fouls committed and zero dribbles passed. Now, takes us to Erlen Harlan. He's been criticised um, over the last. Just just before uh, you, know, you go through, I just want to finish on the two centre backs. Who yeah, I yeah. think is the best partnership. I think Van Dijk and Canate are, are close, but these two, yeah. I, I think they work together better. So much better mm. together. Um, yeah. And I mean, we, we, when we interviewed Nemanja Vidic, he said something that's really important. When you want, uh, when you're the foundations of a great team, a good partnership with centre half, right? Mm. We play consistently together and consistently well. And he said, when it's all said and done, he's, he said, I don't think Nemanja Vidic is Nemanja Vidic without Rio. Mm. And I'd say the same. I'm mm. not Rio and held in uh, the class I'm held in without Nemanja Vidic by my side. For all them years, so and it, and it, that that's that's, that's where that's where I think these two are going towards. Not not I'm saying that they're they're me and the Manu Village. They've got uh, many years to win stuff together, like. But they're becoming aware. You they, you know if they walk out on the pitch, those two are hand by hand, hand in hand, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, nose to nose if need be. That's the way they look to me. And it's like it's it's there's no it's not there's no a side in that. We're both a side. That's it. And we roll. That's how it looks for me, them two. And I, and I love seeing it. I respect it. Bad, bad boys for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, and you know what? It also helps the wing backs as well, innit? Like, you see that confidence. It gives mm. Ben White, you know, on, on the left-hand side as well. Kivior, who a lot of people haven't really spoken about, but yeah, he's, he's done good, really man. well. Yeah, I, I said to you good. in the group the other day, innit? Like, you get, yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah, that no, he, now, but he's been no, solid. No, he's been I, solid. I agree. He's been good. And you know, when you've got a, a solid base, right? Mm. It allows other people to, to run forward. If you haven't got a solid base, right, players in front of you, the Declan Rices, the Odegaards, the et cetera, right, the Havertz, mm. et cetera, mm. they will attack, right, but they'll mm. attack with apprehension. They'll attack with, even if it's a millisecond, they'll attack mm. doing that. Mm. What's going on behind me? Like, if, mm. if they're thinking, mm, should I, shouldn't I go, if I leave them all on their own, are they okay? That little split-second thought, yeah, changes the picture in front of them means that they can't get the ball where they want to get to or they can't have the shot or can't assist the pass or etc. Now they don't look back. I'm telling you, they don't they don't think what's going on behind. They're just thinking, right, it's locked down behind. Let's go and play. And so they play with so much more freedom. That's how your players played, isn't it? Um like you know you were saying there were seasons where um you had to tighten up in the defence because it was like ping pong. Uh mm. one of your co- was it Rene Mullerstein? Yeah. He, he had the, the, the midfield and the attackers going a bit too wild. But they could do that because they had you at the back because no one's going to beat yeah. you for a foot race. Yeah, and, and I don't know, man. It, giving players in front of you that freedom is, is, is key. But also, like you said there, when you see Haaland, that's the, uh, Haaland didn't look as confident as I've seen him a lot of times. He, he looks like he knows he's in for a battle against two solid guys. He ain't playing against one, where it's one to man to man. He can peel on the other one, who's a bit weak. He's playing against two, and it's like every time he goes up for a challenge, one of them's on his, on his, under his shirt, one of them's behind him, one of them's in front of him. I see Gabriel giving him a bit, a bit of mouth during and after the game. There's that real competitive edge, but Harland, man, it just it was one of those games where he thought, listen, what what Roy Keane said yesterday. I don't think it's anything. It's not a surprise. Like, division division two is a far a bit far fetched. Is that right? League two, 
Okay. He'd be a League Two player, yeah. They're, they're a bit far fetched, but his all round game has never been something that anyone's marvelled at. I've never ever sat there and thought, "Wow, his hold up plays immense." He, he gets He's... it in and brings other people into the game. His whole, whole game was finishing in and around a six yard box, a penalty box, or running onto things. When he runs onto stuff from the halfway line, that's it. The, the other, his other game always needed work. How many times did we watch him early last season when he was on his goal scoring run? He had eight touches in a game or something. Ten, twelve yeah, touches no, in a game. It's you're right. Me. You say that, but I think the difference is coming to the Premier League. I guess because we get to watch him week in week out, it's exposed. And what I mean by that is, at one point, if you had asked me who's the best player of him and Mbappe depending on what type of week it was in the Champions League, I could have said Eve or Yeah. But now, you. now there's no question for me. And what makes it even worse, we're not here to put down Harlan. Obviously, you know, we've, we've interviewed him. We're going to be interviewing him more um, coming up. But even when you see that all of a sudden the warm-up, <laughs> the warm-up clip has been flying around. The have Rondo, you seen it? the Rondo. <laughs> oh, Lord. Like, that's how being no, a, but, look, but, you can't but, Joe, please. Joe, Joe. Yeah. This is what I'm saying, yeah. You're the you're the you're the normal fan, yeah. You don't get to go training ground, yeah. You are yeah. coming with me soon, yeah. But we you don't get to see and and live and breathe the training ground rondos, yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. that in every single squad, there's two or three or four of them man that can't play rondo? They're rubbish. They're terrible. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a fact. Do you know what I mean I remember players used to come to England? And I used to think, well, Nigel Weir Coker sat out the rondo. Confidence was on the floor. Do you know what I mean? Mitch! Sol Campbell, Sol Campbell, Sol Campbell was never any good at Rondo. Looked awkward. James B. wasn't Owen. the man. Uh, Michael Owen was okay, not top, but he was okay. But but like I'm talking about, there was a lot of players that used to go raw. Don't like he can't come in our Rondo. He's not. He ruins it. He ruins it. They, don't, don't let him in. At United, it was like it was like the the the, the senior players. And if a young player had to come over, do you know the sweating was going on for a young player to come in the box because. You can't mess up the momentum of it. If you mess it up, you're going to get drilled. And the nerves. It was good. It was good at United. Do you know it was good, but people wouldn't even even think about it in the Rondos. Let me guess. Go on, Anderson. No, Anderson was rubbish. Is it? And they didn't take it. Didn't take it seriously. You know the Rondo is not a joke thing. It's a proper. It's a drill. Like, and that's what we used to say. You can't mess about. The young ones used to mess about. But yeah. Roy Keane, bro, used to slap the ball in, mate. I'm telling you. Serious. Down the line, down right down, down the side. For, oh mate, bad, bad. Roy Keane, bad. Um, Lauren Blanc was king of the nutmegs. Remember Lauren Blanc? Yeah, bad yeah, boy. yeah. French, the nutmeg French people. Up, Ruben Estoril was good. Ruben Estoril was top. Yeah. Um, Rondo. Scalzi was good. Veron. Um, Giggsy. Giggsy was good. Giggsy had the megs, the slime megs. No look, let megs un unlock. Um, Carrick was good because he had both feet. Yeah. Patrice Ever was always in the middle. I used to play against him because we used to always do like me and him. We used to have like a comp every day. Like who would get the yeah. most? We used to used to have to get the flick on the ear at the end of the session. I used to bury yeah. him, bro. He used to be in. Yeah. He, used to, he, he might as well put the bib on. <laughs> Random one, yeah. What about Ravel Morrison? Too young. He weren't in our box. He couldn't come in our box. Are you You're mad? No. Nah. Too young. To it was a hierarchy, isn't it? You can't just walk into our box and think that you, know, you just sign and walk in. Even Wazza weren't in our box for years. Nah, you're lying. You're lying. And Ronaldo. Ronaldo and Wazza never got in our box. What, when they first signed? No, for years, mate. And Ronaldo, Ronaldo, I don't think, ever come in our box. Shook. <laughs> yeah, serious. No. But but what I mean, yeah, to, so to, to see that clip of Haaland not good and not doing well in the Rondo... I'm not even going, oh, my God, have you seen this clip? It's just like, that's just what... There's a lot of players out there, but they, a lot of them will never admit it. Trust me. Never admit it. We'll have to start asking a few players, who's the worst in the rondos? I think that's a good question, man. That's really good insight as well, because for, for us who, like you said, we don't really get that like inside inside scoop. Uh, shout out to the inside But it shows scoop. you, don't it? It shows you. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. It shows you yeah. that it ain't all about skills. It ain't all mm. about just skills, 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 this, that, and the other. It's all mm. about... Can you get the ball to the goal quicker than anyone else and put it in the back of the net? And he does it better than anyone else. 
Yeah. You know what? Um, whilst before we wrap up on Arsenal, I was just going to say, uh, quite a game for my boy Bakayo Saka. Uh, I need him rested a bit more. Um, I, I don't know if it's obviously Southgate, there's no more warm up games, but um, stats weren't good. Um, he pro he ended up with the most tackles, I was told, by, by Archie behind the scenes. But his overall stats, zero shots, zero chances created, zero successful dribbles, zero accurate crosses and zero passes into the final third. Yeah, tight game though, man. The, the, the tight blocks riding on it. Um, but also, these are the games that you want him to impact. These are the games that you want him to go, yeah, I'm the man. But listen, no attacker on the pitch came away from that game going, oh, oh. I'll, I, I open that game up. He put one goal across the box, Jesus, on another day, backs it in the back of the net, a tapping. But Habits is quiet. Yeah, they were all quiet. All, all the attacking players were quiet, really. So it's no, um, it was just one of those games. It was a tight, cagey affair. Yeah. Next few games, uh, Luton, Brighton, Villa for us. Obviously, we got Bayern Munich twice in between those games. Uh, it's, it's down to you guys, though, United. Next week on Sunday, I'm screaming, come on, United, United, United against Liverpool. I need you guys to get the three points. You're going to be there, Rio. I need yeah, I'm you. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Can Scott we just shout us. out? I need to shout out Mason Mount. Yeah, Let's forget the result right now. Mason Mount's mm. had a really tough opening few months to his main United career so for him to come in and get a goal I was gutted actually we didn't finish the game off so he could get the winner but he comes in and scores so hopefully now he's on that little run now to get a bit of confidence and play his way back into the team because he's uh, I've been waiting I've been really un uh, unhappy with the way that he started with injuries and this really kind of hampered his start but the performance of May United man it just left me so flat that's why I was gutted with the national break come when it came we just got the result that we needed. And you're sitting there going, right, Man United beat Liverpool. Last minute, what a game. Towels are up. And then it goes flat because in national break. You need the momentum, man. You need that momentum to carry on and push you into the next game. All went to international games, forgot about Liverpool game, what it meant, the feeling that they had. And they go into the Brentford game flat as you like, man. Do you know that Brentford had 85 touches in a Man United box? 85 touches. You know how hard it is to do that. The yes. most by any team in the Premier League across the last three seasons. Like, just like we got opened up. Like, I don't, it's, you can't say it's the defence, it's the structure of the team. We're sitting there going, listen, man, you look and just come in our box here. We'll get you let get close to our box and then we'll start defending. It's so easy for teams to get through us. How does it make you feel like, as a player who you've worn the badge, you know the importance, and the manager comes after the game and he says, Brentford wanted it more than us the entire game. Yeah, Forget was, everything that was, else. That line. That was, that was, I don't know, man. That was one of the, I didn't like that. Oh. Because there are some times that you go out there and you just don't play well. But a team wanting it more than you don't really. I don't. I don't remember any day in when I was at United where it wasn't for the want of wanting it or trying or effort. Yeah, quality might not be there. It might be a day where your things aren't going to plan technique-wise for you, and you're missing chances, misplacing passes. But the intention and the endeavour and the grit and the fight and the work ethic and the body language—it's all there, man. They're non-negotiables. They, them things I just mentioned there, the desire and all that, and that, like the application and the work ethic, the hunger. Do you know what I mean? They're non-negotiables. They, they, that shouldn't be allowed to be a thing that like you can get away with that. And I don't know. The problem is maybe is that because of injuries or, or whatever. The, but, but bro, I remember on the sidelines. I remember Giggsy and Beck used to say, "I hate being on the manager's side." Uh, I hate to bring it back, but these are just things that just remind me like, well, why? What are you talking about? Oh, the manager's there, man. He's on you the whole half on that side where if you're his side of the pitch, if he gets out of that dugout, man, he just puts it on you. And you know what? If you don't run back and chase the fullback in the first half, you don't. You might not come out for the second half. That This is Bex and Giggs, bro. One of them was probably five or six Premier League deep at that time when he was telling me this. He'd won five or six Premier Leagues. And he was shook to be on the same side as Alex Ferguson because just in case the fullback outrun him or got beyond him, 
going the other way. We used to think, shit, I could beat it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it at half time. I don't know if these men are getting that. I don't know if that fear is there. Or, or are we in a time? Or are we in a time where you're not meant to make players feel fear, as a, from a manager's perspective? Right. But then I think that's wrong because I looked at the stats. I was actually um, looking at the stats, and your attackers that made hardly any shots. Hardly any shots. You know, Garnacho one shot. Highland one shot. Yeah, yeah, Rash I get that. I don't, I don't really. I'm not really that bothered about that. But that's fine. You get games where really? it doesn't come up. look at the Arsenal game the other day. You, 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 and I was against City. It's different, but you, your attackers just ain't on it that day. It's fine. No, but, but you really, can't tell me. You can't, but you can't. Yeah, but you, yeah. you can't tell me that's that Central. Won't, no, you know, area. I know it's Brentford, but you can't tell me that Saka ain't running. No matter who he's playing against, if he ain't coming off, he's still grafting. Do you know what I mean? But that's, you, it's all through your attackers, though. That's the problem. No, I know, but but I don't think that's my issue. Like my issue, the the only goals that they score against um, Liverpool the other day. But that's the issue. You scored. You scored. Was it? Was it four? Four three? Was it four three? Right. But, oh. but, but so the the scoring and getting, and the creating isn't really my issue. The issue is more the graft. I don't want it to come off the pitch and the manager saying that man. Brentford wanted it wanted it more than us the entire game. Do you know how like? That quote should be put up in the training ground. Like, the photocopy machine should be doing a madness right now, and they should be up on everyone's locker. Like, that should be that's an embarrassment as a professional footballer for your manager to come in and say, you know what, my players didn't really give it today, didn't really try, they wanted it more than us. That's an issue, though. Really. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's it's an issue overall. I think Roy Keane said it yesterday, and and, and all of them uh, actually watching. They were like. You and Steve have said it. We just don't know which United's going to turn up. Mm -hmm. Who's turning up this week? You got Liverpool next week, right? Big game, one of the biggest games in the season. Can you sit here and tell me, hand on the heart, you know which United's going to turn up? No, that's the problem. But I've not said. I said this all season. All season, I've said like I just don't know. If I was a gambling man, I wouldn't be betting on my United. Yeah, no chance because you just don't know what you're going to get. You do not know what you're going to get. And, and, and for a manager, that must be a terrible place to be because you want to know what your team is. Mm. I, I don't know what, man, I, I keep this like a broken record, but I don't know what, I don't know. If someone said to me, describe our team from the positives of what we are and stuff like that, I don't really get the, get the ball to Bruno and hope that something happens. Or Ganacho, hope something happens. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that one of those two will create something at the moment. That, that's basically what we do. Maino might keep it, keep it in there and keep it nice and tidy and whatnot. But the only bright, that's like, it's, Dalot's improved and doing really well now. But I'm looking no, no, at it no. and going like, but as a team, I've, I'm, see, I've gone to individuals because the team don't tell me nothing yet. The individuals tell me more than what the team is. The best teams, you look at the team before individuals. Do you know what I mean? It's like Bayern Munich now. We're talking about Kane's having a fantastic season, but the team is struggling. Do you know what I mean? When you talk about Man City doing the treble last year, you got Haaland, yeah, the goal scorer, but then you got the uh, De Bruyne's and then you got like the the um, the Stones coming into midfield. You've got uh, uh, the goalkeepers always solid. You, I just go through the team and Rodri, the best CDM in the in the world. They're performing as a unit. Do you know what I mean? It's just Man United that that they, they, they haven't got a co cohesive unit. They're not a team that dominate possession and, and pin a team back. They're not a team that work on transitions constantly and, and we know them for that. They're not a team that play the offside and, and play a high line. I don't know what we are because one week to the other, we change. Do you know what I mean? It's, and it's, it's disheartening to see, man. Um, yeah, there's no point of going into individual players and going, he didn't do this, he didn't do that because the reality is, like you said, as a team, it's a bit dodge. I mean, if I was to ask you right now, where do you think Manchester United are going to finish this season? What would you say? I don't know. I don't know where May United are going to finish because I don't know what team turns up week to week. That's the honest... May, May United players couldn't sit here and tell you anything different. The May United manager, I know for a fact, in, in his head he's sitting there and going, I hope we finish fourth, but I don't know because I don't know what team comes out at that tunnel. When that whistle blows, I'm sitting there hoping what we've done in the week comes out in the 90 minutes. 
Yeah, fourth is a stretch, man. You lot are like 11 points behind uh, Villa, uh, who are still winning, by the way. I know you got a game in hand over them, but... Yeah, and Villa and top... Spurs. Villa and Spurs bang, st still banged out their two games. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're, we're, it's not like the other teams are really inconsistent around us. They're not. I, I, I think it's I think it's going to be difficult to finish fourth for United, fifth or sixth. Yeah, I think fifth if you're lucky, and you, you're going to hope for Spurs to to not be playing well if mm. you're lucky. But yeah, man, I think that's uh, I think that's just Man United overall. Did we discuss with you very quickly before we we wrap up? Did you, did we discuss with you the thoughts on Southgate last week? We did, didn't we? Potentially coming yeah, into yeah, you know? yeah, 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 we did, we did. And, and did. Gary O'Neill being linked with a coach's role at United, which he's dismissed. Do you reckon mm. that would have been a, a good shout or? I don't know. I, I, it's all about if, if personnel, if they're interested for one, but also Gary O'Neill, you have to say as a manager, he's doing his thing, man. He's doing mm. a great job. Is he going to be willing to take a back seat? He probably have to go, uh, be on a third of the money he's on now. Like if, if he signs a new deal, I think you're not sure if he has or if he does. Sign it, but he probably got a deal on the table at, at Wolves, he'll have something kicking around at some point. He's doing so well. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna? He probably have to go on like a quarter or a third of his wages that he's on now to go there and be the second man and have no responsibility. I don't know if he's taking that. He's mm -hmm. doing too well as a manager in his own right to be talked yeah. about. I think it's disrespectful for him to be uh, Gary O'Neill, who who kept Bournemouth up, done really mm -hmm. well there, gone to Wolves and really kicking them on, and mm -hmm. he'll go in at Man United as an assistant manager. If it was Man City or or under Klopp at Liverpool, I understand maybe a bit more. You might even look at that, but not Man United where we are at the moment. I don't think so. Uh, moving it on, Liverpool, obviously, they, they snatched a victory after Danny Welbeck's... Oh, did you see Danny Welbeck's first goal, by the way? Did you message him? Yeah, straight in the group, bro. Well, well Binho, yeah? Is that how he's going on? Yeah, <laughs> nice. But he's um, Welbeck's, man. He, he, he should have stayed at United. So I always tell him that. Should have stayed there. But, what, what, but, why, why but Brighton played well, man. But Brighton does some good for their Liverpool on, on the ropes a couple of times. De Zerbe obviously linked to the Liverpool job along with a sporting manager if Klopp, when Klopp goes. But I have to say Mo Salah. Mo Salah, he's been away at the AFCON. He's been injured. And he's got 25 plus goal involvements, by the way. Most in the pre most Premier League seasons with 25-plus goal involvements, and he sits alongside Thierry Henry and Alan Shearer all on seven. Like, consistency, he's, Mo Salah should be alongside the word consistency because what he's done with goals and assists and just sheer impact at the club has been phenomenal. Yeah, he's something else. Would you... Would you? Who, who's your player of the season so far? I don't know, you know. I don't think there's a real, real, real outstanding candidate. Mm. Like, Mo, for, for the amount of goals that he's been involved in, Mo Salah, he, 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 people throw his name straight away. But he ain't really played unbelievably well when I've seen him. Do you know what I mean? He ain't not been dominant. What's the like, short Foden, F F Foden had a great, a, great, a great spell. Rodri's been a joke. I think it's Rodri, you know. Rodri. Rodri Rodri's, I think Rodri's the most important player at City. Yeah. So... And they're one of the top teams. I just feel like he, uh, he's more important than even any other player at other teams. I was saying Foden before, and it still might be Foden. It's so tight. But then obviously you've got Mo Salah. It, it could be him if you're looking at the last eight games of the season. But Who else? if I was to pick someone like that, it probably has to be Rodri for me. Do you know um, he's been got... really good? Do you know he's been really good? But no one will vote for him. Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer's been top. Pascal Gross, have you seen him? No, I ain't really watched Brighton like that this season. Mate, just everything goes through him. Just yeah. like control dictates the pace of the game, gets the assists, gets that pass before the assists. Great balance, great just consistency with the way he plays, man. But no one's going to talk about someone like him. Mm -hmm. um, who else has done well? I've been a fan of Konza this season. I've been saying all season. Konza's been I've... good, yeah. Konza... Oh, Douglas Luiz has been good. Yeah, he's been tops. He's been he's good. Been tops. Um, tops. Who else? Oh, you know what? Whoever finishes the season McAllister. strong now, who? McAllister. McAllister. McAllister's been, been he's, he's playing well, especially the last few weeks. Yeah. I think whoever finishes the season really strong now as an individual, uh, those mm. little num names we've mentioned, will nick it. Mm. 
interesting stuff, man. But yeah, with Liverpool, are Liverpool your favourites to win it? Because they were having big debates yesterday all over Twitter, everywhere. Who's your favourite to win it now? I think I'd still have City slight favourites just because of the experience. Really? I, think, I think your running might just go against you, maybe. You've got a harder oh. running. You've got to play some of the bigger play, bigger teams, um, which might go against you. I don't know. And just might, You might run your legs out, maybe. I'm not sure. I won't be surprised if you won it, but I just think your, your running might be... City's injuries could, go, could hurt them. Liverpool is strong, going to be strong, you know. Liverpool will be harder. I don't know. I can't call it. I can't. Their, their running is not easy as well, Liverpool, you know. Their, Liverpool's running is a little... they got a few tricky games. they got Villa. Mm. they got they got a few... A few... United. Potential man. I think they've got, um, they got Everton as well. Like, yeah, they got United. Everton. They do, yeah. So they've got a few tricky ones. We'll see. Um, see really it's easiest. Yeah, hundred percent. We'll see. Uh, moving it on really quickly. Shout out to all the Chelsea massive out there struggling to beat ten man Burnley. I see you guys. <laughs> you know, all, all my Chelsea boys out there. Palmer, uh, Palmer is on fire. Palmer, he is. But you said Has it he earlier. Got a deal with Clark's yet? Has he got a deal with Clark's yet? <laughs> Message him. That's your guy, man. Ask no, him. We get, we're we're going to get him on soon. He's what's he called? He's just he's gone there. Everything's falling away, away, away around Chelsea's. Everything's all over the place here. Yeah? The only constant is Palmer bagging goals. I think it's under 21 years old. He's got the most goal involvement over Jude Bellingham in Europe. That? Yeah, I know. I, I don't like that stat, though, because all, all my Chelsea guys keep DMing, DMing. Yeah, but it's like, a fact. He's doing it, bro. He's doing it. Yeah, circumstances are different, though, isn't it? No, no. Yeah, I'm not saying he's better than Jude. He's nowhere near as good as Jude in my eyes. Jude's doing... For, for every one goal that Jude scores, uh, of most other clubs, it's probably three or four goals it counts as. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. No, I like that. Because it's Bernabeu. It's in the Bernabeu. It's at Real. It's different. I'm going to use that one. But you see the Penenka he scored, though, Palmer. Mm. He don't surprise me. My man, he moves and plays in the Premier League like he's at goals. That's mm -hmm. how he moves. Like he, that. he would be doing the same thing. His heart rate will be the same at goals what it would be in front of 70,000. Nah, he's mad cool. It's like it's like that uh, that skill I did against SV two at the Rio Ferdinand Foundation. Ooh, play the clip, play the clip, play the clip. I had to drop put, that in. You're gonna put my cameo in. You're gonna put my uh, cameo in. What what did you say? You're gonna put my little cameo in as well. Yeah, behind it. Oh mate, that's on SV 2s video. I'm hoping he 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 puts that because those. I now I know what your teammates say. Rio hype man. When someone does a skill, oh, 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 oh. No, no, all no, I hear no. is you in the background. skill that you've done, I must say it was a skill of the day. It was nasty. Whoever hasn't seen it, go over to Eman's SV2 YouTube channel and check out the bit of skill that, yeah. that Joe done on him. I didn't know Joe had this. Good luck. Wow. Joe yeah. better come out to play. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. All right, brother. Oh! 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 Oh!
That was big. Oh. That was that Listen. was career ending. Revival five. Career Revival ending. Shut my hat. Revival. <laughs> Shut my hat like a man as well. <laughs> Yeah, that, <laughs> that was career what? ending. What? In front of Rio, bro. What a way to finish. In front of Rio. No. You know what that was? Yeah, just used to so play. So we're talking, we played a game together the other day for my charity for the Rio Ferdinand Foundation, yeah, in Ireland. With yeah. some loads of young young people um, who were doing some great work in the community over there, uh, mm -hmm. just as a celebration. And we went over there, Joe and his team thankfully come over with five. And uh, we played in the game. I came on. Me and Joe brought ourselves on for the last 15 minutes. I was in my in my, my normal work gear and football boots. And, yeah, I just rolled back the ears a little bit, bruv. A couple of back heels and that. So, mm. yeah, no, it was really good. Well done, man. I didn't know you could still play, Rio. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't defend. I can't run no more. But give, put the ball to my feet and then stuff happens. You know what I mean? I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, real quickly as we're rattling through um, Newcastle 4, West Ham 3 the maddest game I've seen West Ham 3-1 up at half time they lose the game you know what they, they, they were blaming like Calvin Phillips like yeah. the penalty weren't his fault like, it, that, that yeah, was that such was a, like, a mad situation it wasn't his fault I don't know man I feel for Calvin Phillips man I hope his confidence can come back man because He's getting drilled now. See his reaction to one of the fans and getting get on the coach. I would have done that. I'll be honest. I would have done that. Special fingers. I would have given someone the fish finger. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're hammering me like that, like I'm out there trying to do my best and you're sitting there trying to just drill me the whole time. And you've got to try and remain composed, I know, but it's hard, man, when you can see, he cares, man. He's a, he's a good lad. He's a nice lad, Calvin. He's had a tough couple of years in terms of game time. He's getting a bit of game time now and things aren't going his way. And listen, when confidence ain't there, I've said this before, the Zinedine Zidane's of this world will struggle when confidence is low. So anyone well, else it happens to? The only, the only, the only bit I can really go, oh, we could have done a bit better, was Harvey Barnes' second goal. Like, I just feel like Harvey Barnes like went past him a little bit quickly. Um, like for for Barnes' second goal, it's like he he skipped past Calvin Phillips and. I feel like Calvin Phillips was invisible there. Uh, and, yeah, and I felt, yeah. it's not because it's Calvin Phillips, I just mean as a midfielder, you need to be a little bit tighter. I know Barnes is quick, but... But West Ham, listen, West Ham being 3-1 up and losing that game, it ain't poor. Calvin Phillips' fault. No, no, that was poor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a team, poor. it's a team, have to look at themselves. Mm, that was that was poor. And I, I don't know what to say about, you know, like, I'm, I'm interested to hear Anton's take on this, on the take on on Wednesday. Mm. Guys, He's been very quiet. He's been show. very quiet. Very quiet. You've got to watch that show. Anton, uh, Abby, Abby Summers and Flex, they're absolutely killing it on that show. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, obviously, Tottenham beating Luton 2-1. Uh, mm. Sun breaking records again. Uh, fifth highest goal scorer for Spurs. Mm. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, Bournemouth beating Everton 2-1. Uh, Solanke, you know he's on the go he's got yeah. some goals this season, man. Yeah, he'll be he'll be feeling a little bit like I, I should be getting an England shot at some point, but yeah. he's doing well. Yeah, either that or a, or a, or a big move. You know mm. that could be on the cards as well. Obviously, Nottingham Forest uh, drawing one all with Crystal Palace. Uh, Chris Wood coming uh, coming around to save the day again. Really good header. He's been doing a good job, if I'm honest with you, uh, mm. this season, Chris Wood. I saw some good stats on match of the day regarding him as well. Fulham equalising. Matt, shout out to to Jack. Told us to told us to watch out for Muniz. Um, What's the know, goal, by the way? Oh, mate, says a kick. What's yeah, the goal? Uh, eight goal, eight goals and eight appearances for him. Mm. Flying. Aston Villa, man. Wow. Mm. Conta with another goal. He's had a great week, by the way. Yeah, great week. Really England well. and then now scoring in a 2 0 win against us, uh, against Wolves. So yeah. Villa, relentless, man. They're looking, they're, they want Champions League football, it looks like. They want it. Yeah. They'll get, I think they'll get it. I think there's no one catching them at the moment. You know, shout out to Andy Brogan, um, big big Villa fan, friend of the show. Uh, he's telling us he's like he's like he said he said United are nowhere near good enough, Rio. Yeah, no, I know. I remember he said that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, also uh, by Munich, by Leverkusen. It looks like it looks like Xabi is not going to be going to Liverpool. Uh, and whilst he's making that announcement, he's 13 points clear, bruv. Yeah, Tuchel basically said, he's, Tuchel said, it's over. Yeah. Well done, Leverkusen. So, Xabi Alonso, his stock is so high right now. Mm -hmm. And I saw Richard Keyes hammer him and say, ah, oh, his stock will never be this high. He's got to go for it. But this is a great example of someone maybe being patient, right? 
because you've got on the other hand, Frank Lampard never done this, never got to this to winning a, a, the Bundesliga or winning the league. Yeah, but he was at Derby, sharpening his tools, doing well. Chelsea come. Everybody sitting there going, ah, oh, you can't turn it down. You've got to go. Frank Lampard, Chelsea, it's a match made in heaven, blah, 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 blah. He goes. And then after, with hindsight, everyone's going, ah, oh, he should have stayed and learned his, his trade a little bit longer at a lower team and he should have maybe got a bit more experience and blah, blah, blah. And then you've got, on the other hand, Chabi Alonso's in a similar, not simple, a similar situation where he was a young manager just starting out on his journey and all the big clubs come knocking after year one or two, right? Mm. Two, two years, two, three years. Mm. Everyone's saying he should go, but I guarantee if he went to, to, to Liverpool and it flopped, everyone began, you know what? He probably needed a little bit more time before he made that type of jump. Mm. Give these guys time, man. If he's made the decision to stay at Bayer Leverkusen, it's because he wants to get more, 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 um, more experience. He wants to sharpen his tools. He wants to enjoy that feeling of winning and maybe going back to back again. Mm. Proving it weren't with luck. Do you know what I mean? So give these guys time. I think we're, we're quick to judge like that. Like Richard Keyes is obviously experienced in this game, but saying that he's made a rick, he's he's made the biggest mistake of his life. His stock will never be this high. But you don't know where this guy's going to go. You don't know what he's going to achieve and and his trajectory of what it looks like. Do you know what I mean? Just because he turns down Liverpool, he might be going to Real Madrid. He might have already done a deal behind the scenes to go to Real Madrid, a bigger club than Liverpool. Yeah, no, I think and, and, and he has those connections to do that. Yeah, I think you're spot on there. So yeah, no, time is definitely on his side. Uh, mm. Harry Kane, mate, like gutted for him, gutted for him, absolutely gutted. He's kept to his side of the bargain. He's come and done what he's meant to do, but the the, the, the team just fell over, man. And they've been beaten by a better horse because that Leverkusen team, the juggernaut, West Ham are going to find out next time when they, they play them in that cup, the European competition. It's going to be difficult. We'll see what Bayer Leverkusen are against West Ham. Shout out to Dortmund, by the way, because... Uh, and even Sancho's on, back on. Sancho's back. I was going to say, and Sancho, um, you know, good performance there. Like So, to be fair, like, we'll, hey, we'll see what happens anyway. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, listen, happy Easter, man. Happy Easter to you two and the family and uh, make sure you enjoy yourself. Uh, we've got a few guests coming on in the next few weeks. So please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Check out that that Walker interview. Uh, see exactly what I said to him. We've got yeah. shows coming out this week. The Take On. We've got uh, United Liverpool previews. We've got a Match Day 360 vlog with Rio on the, on the Sunday. You didn't know that was happening, did you, Rio? It's happening. Uh, so, yeah, please keep on watching. Joel Bayer, Rio Ferdinand, signing out. Peace.